Hey everybody, this is Kyle Sears from Zola Medical. Today's Zola X Series Tips and Tricks video is going to focus on 12 lead EKGs. We're going to talk about preparing the patient, acquiring the 12 lead, and transmitting to the hospital as well. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk to you guys about is electrode management and skin prep. So we harp on you guys during training not to pre-connect the electrodes. The reason being is they tend to dry out within about three hours of being exposed to air. And it makes it really hard once they're dried out to produce good conductivity and produce a good tracing. So pre-connecting the electrodes, not a good choice. I know you're at the mercy of what the hospital gives you a lot of times, and they may be open and exposed to air already. So if you get in a situation where you have to use what the hospital gives you, try to put them in a Ziploc bag just to try to mitigate the amount of air exposure they have prior to being placed on a patient. You also wanna make sure that you rough up the patient's skin a little bit and that you don't put it over any sort of hair. So some of the electrodes the hospitals provide have a blue strip on the back of them. That's a fine grit sandpaper that you're supposed to use to rough up the patient's skin. That same thing can be accomplished by using a 4x4, an alcohol swab, just something that allows you to make sure that you're working on a nice, fresh, clean skin surface. So just to review, pre-connected electrodes, not good, not a good choice. Electrodes that are in a sealed pouch, whether they're Zoll wet gel electrodes or not, good. You want to err on the side of using these if possible. Make sure you're providing good skin prep before you put the electrode down and that you don't have the electrode on any sort of hairy surface. The way the X-Series software works is every time you turn it on, it assumes you're about to run a call on a cardiac arrest patient. And what I mean by that is it's always gonna be in pads in the upper left corner and it's gonna be expecting you to apply defib pads to the patient's chest and perform CPR. Now on a normal call or a chest pain call, as soon as you place the limb lead cables on the patient, that'll switch from pads to lead to automatically. Now we have a rhythm being presented in lead two via the limb lead cables. Now if I wanna look at more than lead two, the easiest way to do that is to hit the second button down labeled 12, which will bring me into my 12 lead menu. In this case, I only have my limb leads hooked up, so I'm only seeing one half of the 12 lead. One, two, three, AVR, AVL, and AVF. Now, based on your health system and your EMS system, that could be important if you're expected to confirm DOA in multiple leads. You could get away doing that with just hooking up the limb leads, acquiring and transmitting this strip to the hospital without hooking up a full 12 lead to a dead person. Now, for a chest pain call though, we want to go ahead and place the V leads on the patient as well. You want to place those V leads on the patient first prior to you hooking into the junction point in the cable. If you hook into the junction point first, as soon as you put V1 down, there's a current that's running through there, assuming the other leads have fallen off and you'll continue to get a fault message on the device. So my V leads are going to connect in. And now I'll have all 12 leads on the screen. The value of that is now I can look at this and say, hey, all my 12 leads look good. Before I go to acquire this on the patient, I have a visual to confirm that everything is a clean tracing, there's no issues with electrodes, and that the patient isn't moving around aggressively. So the common theme throughout is that we're gonna take a picture of the patient's heart so the camera with the number 12 right here is the button that we press first. That's going to pull up the demographic information for the patient, which defaults to a 45-year-old male patient. The arrow keys on the right side and this dot or select button allows you to enter the information appropriately for that particular patient. So if I want to change the age, I hit enter. The blue cursor moves over and I go up and down and I hit enter again. It allows me to change the gender. You can also put in first, middle, and last name, and there's quick keys down the left-hand side that allow you to jump 
rows and columns to make it easier to navigate. Once that information has been entered, you do not have to go all the way down here, which we see a lot of people end up doing. But from this point, once you have the age and gender entered, you get the patient to sit still. You're gonna take a picture of their heart by hitting the camera with the 12, and it'll start to acquire. Now for five seconds, you'll have the option to stop that acquisition. So if you look at the screen and you see what you know is gonna be a bad 12 lead printing out, you can stop that acquisition Get the patient to settle down, readjust electrodes, whatever you need to do until the tracing on the screen is clear. And then hit the camera with the 12 again and it'll acquire automatically for you. As the paper prints out, the right hand side of the screen stays in a dynamic view so you can compare it to what you see on the strip. You can change between the limb leads and the V leads by hitting the first button right here labeled one, two, three. The second button down allows you to change the initial screen, which is gonna tell you your interpretive statement, into this screen, which shows you your QRS intervals, and also, importantly, your J-point measurements, which we'll look at on the strip as well. Now we're ready to transmit this 12 lead also. The envelope with the number 12 symbolizes you taking this 12 lead, packaging it up, and sending it off to the hospital. When I hit that button, your local hospitals will be listed alphabetically. You choose the hospital you want to go to by hitting enter, a green check mark will come up, and then you go down to transmit and hit enter again. Now, depending on your IT infrastructure, you're either going to be connected to Wi-Fi, in this case we're connected, we see green parentheses around the arrow, or if you're connected to a cellular source, you'll see a blue uh, symbol pop up. It takes about 10 seconds, green light comes on, transmission complete and we've successfully sent that off to the hospital. Now let's take a look at the strip. The 12 lead itself will have three distinct sections. The first section is gonna identify who acquired the 12 lead and what device it came from, which the hospital will also see when they receive the 12 lead. The interpretive statement and your J point measurements. That's going to show the millimeters of elevation or depression off the baseline. The next section is the 12 lead itself. And then at the end of the strip, there'll be an additional 10 seconds of 2, 3, and AVF to help you determine whether or not you have inferior wall blockage on this particular chest pain patient. All right, so what happens if you get to the hospital and the staff says, hey, we never got the 12 lead that you were gonna send for the STEMI patient? You can turn your monitor on, go into the 12 lead section, and this button with the green check mark is where all of your previously acquired 12 leads will be stored. You can press that button. The most recent 12 lead will be listed first, and then you can find whatever 12 lead you're looking for. To the left of the listing, there will either be nothing, which means you acquired the 12 lead and did not try to transmit it. You'll see a blue circle with a white arrow pointing up, which means you transmitted it and it successfully went through. Or you'll find a yellow circle with an exclamation point, which means you tried to transmit it, but it did not successfully go through for some reason. So let's take this as an example. At that point, you could either ask the hospital staff, do you want me to transmit it again so you have it electronically, or would you just like me to print a copy? And by pressing the enter button, it brings you back as if you had just acquired the 12 lead on the patient. You can either transmit it like we looked at before, or you can print it off by hitting the printer roll.